For years, we've been enchanted by the idea of magic. The thought that someone with the wave of a wand, snap of a finger, or some magic words could completely change the world around them in an instant is an idea that has captured minds throughout history. Right now, we live in a world where we manipulate the entirety of human knowledge on screens barely bigger than credit cards. I'd be willing to bet that everyone in this room has a device in their pocket that has more computing power than the technology we used to send people to space. Compared to the rest of human history, it's amazing to see how far we've come, even within just my lifetime. With the advent of technology like extended reality, machine learning, and other technologies, the way we interact with computers is going to fundamentally change over the next several years. Today I'm going to show you some research projects that are pushing the boundaries of technology and that I believe are going to thoroughly change how we interact with computers, information, and each other. But first, take a moment to dream with me. It's 20XX, a Tuesday. Imagine you're a kid being ke learning chemistry for the first time. Remember molecular geometry? The thing where you'd have to arrange atoms in various 3D shapes, like tetrahedra and octahedra. You probably had to draw them out on paper, using nothing but a pencil and ruler to visualize these abstract shapes. Um, maybe you were a little bit luckier and were able to play with Play-Doh and toothpicks like I did in high school, but it's still not the most amazing way to figure out this information. Instead of all that, kids in 20XX play with holograms, manipulating atom atomic bonds with their bare hands in space. They're able to intuitively understand how these microscopic things work because they can play with it much easier than they would be otherwise. Uh, imagine you're out hiking in the woods and um, you see a gorgeous landscape of mountains. Uh, you whip out your sketchbook and start drawing them inspired by their beauty. <clears throat> but you don't exactly have an entire set of paints on your person. But that doesn't matter. As you draw thin, wobbly lines, it transforms into a picturesque landscape painting right before your eyes. You get home from work and jump into a game that basically puts you into the matrix. Swarmed by agents in a hostile world, you're constantly dodging bullets with your entire body in slow motion. Now you want to tell me that all of this is impossible and requires technology that we don't have yet, right? But it turns out 20XX is actually just 2018. These are some of the things that we did last year. <laughs> the chemistry application is Project Pupil at Carnegie Mellon. The painting app is a project by Memo Atkin, and the slow-mo shooter is super hot, which you can literally go to a VR arcade to play right now. Uh, so what are these things? How, how are we doing this? <laughs> um, there's a couple things at play here. Um, XR, or extended reality, is essentially an umbrella term used to describe a continuum of combinations of technology that involve interacting with digital and physical objects. This includes technologies like virtual reality, where your entire world is digital, uh, augmented reality, where uh, you overlay flat information onto the real world, and any dimension in between. Uh, the thing that really ties XR together is that basically you use computers to sort of augment your, your perception of the real world. Maybe you've had the chance to try out um, primitive augmented reality systems like Pokemon Go, or have even been, or have been lucky enough to have tried uh, virtual reality system sellers like Beat Saber. Um, virtual reality and um, extended reality as a spectrum of technology can put you in wholly new and different worlds or just add information to the real world. On the other hand, machine learning is essentially using particular algorithms in order to teach computers how to solve problems. It's used in all sorts of applications, from teaching computers how to master Go, to powering self-driving cars, to generating cats from a handful of lines. I drew the one on the bottom myself. <laughs> Don't look too closely at him. <laughs> There's a lot of exciting work using machine learning to see the world through a computer's eyes. We're able to take it, um, machines and show them the world around us. We can show artificial intelligence our bodies, our paintings, how objects interact, see what they come up with, and then use that to shape our perception. 
Uh, I feel like some of the most exciting projects in this field have been through open source and publicly funded projects. Uh, for example, this is OpenPose. It is a project at UC Berkeley, or no, I lied, Carnegie Mellon, <laughs> um, that uses uh, neural networks and cameras to identify whole bodies in single images. There's been a couple of spin-off projects based on this research, uh, one of which puts your entire body into VR using only a headset, camera, and like controllers without any markers, which is pretty significant. And then there's other projects that will take video of one person dancing and basically transpose that dance onto a totally different video of a totally different person dancing. It's fantastic. Uh, another example of um, open source projects that are fantastic is um, Pix2Pix. This is a project at UC Berkeley. That's like actually Berkeley. <laughs> um, it's fun. It basically uses neural networks to uh, generate images based on input data. So um, some spin-off projects that have come from this are um, one that will take your webcam feed and turn it into a gorgeous like array of flowers, or um, ones that will take uh, still images of Wilmington and landscape shots and turn them into paintings that look like they were made by Van Gogh. Um, there's also Project North Star, which is an open source augmented reality headset by uh, Leap Motion. Um, basically, anyone can 3D print this headset anywhere in the world. Um, anyone can like start building their own. <laughs> um, there's a developing community of like people, developers, just working on building and sourcing these headsets and their parts. Um, and yeah, all of these projects are open source. So anyone can take any of this and start building new and interesting things on top of it. Um, and they have, they includes me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually building my own North Star headset right now. Um, yeah, I 3D printed most of the parts back at the University of Delaware. Um, some of them were sourced, again, from community members. Um, most of this happened over the course of Summer Scholars, which is a program at UD where I took 10 weeks to basically learn the basics of XR development. And then I kind of turned that experience into VIP VR, which is an undergraduate research project where I and a team of undergrads are basically learning to create XR experiences. Uh, I also went to Reality Virtually, a hackathon at MIT's Media Lab this past like week or two ago. Um, my team personally created a VR escape room in under three days. <laughs> um, yeah, and I got together with over 400 hackers, developers, designers, coders, humans, and we made <laughs> we made uh, just under 100 different open source augmented reality projects. And because they're open source, anyone can take this work and make more things. <laughs> Um, I actually went with a handful of people. Um, my mentor, Dr. Barmaki, um, her team actually won Best VR overall for a physical therapy application that uh, they submitted in under three days again. <laughs> so, yeah. In my mind, all of this technology comes together in the concept of mirror worlds. Rather than ever truly leaving your physical space, it will transform around you into another parallel dimension. Chairs become mountains. Walls become sunsets, and the floor is lava turns from a simple kid's game into a visceral experience. <laughs> you can interact with digital objects the same way as you would with physical, and you can interact with physical ones to an even greater effect. Imagine like taking a guitar and having it teach you how to play it. It can show you how to hold it in order to play particular chords. Or things could change altogether as tables turn into touch screens and pencils turn into wands. The question is no longer how can we make this work, but rather how should this feel? We're getting to the point where what was considered magic is real and here and now. <laughs> uh, and it's fantastic. <laughs> 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 <laughs>